My name's Regan. I get ten a day in expenses from a detective bureau run by a guy named Anthony J. Lyon. They call me the Lion's Eye. With Jack Webb as Jeff Regan, the Lion's Eye, stand by for hard-boiled action and mystery and thrilling adventure in tonight's story of the guy from Gower Gulch. It's a gray building, about the color of moldy bread. It's an apartment house in the middle of Hollywood, and it figures that the guy who built it quit voting when they named the street it sits on, Taft Avenue. My place is furnished with war surplus from the Spanish-American War. Well, it's got a hat rack, and that's where I live, number 308. In back, where you get a view and some fresh air from the alley. One's about as bad as the other. But I got it fixed up kind of nice. Hot plate, coffee pot, an autographed picture of Sally Rand that somebody left there. Only mistake I made was putting in a telephone. It spoils a lot of things. Regan, it's the lion. Wake up. We got a job. Why don't you sleep at night? Lucky for you, I got insomnia. We go broke. Try Ovaltine. What kind of a job? How should I know? Get your clothes on. What are you doing, reading the want ads? I got a note from a client. You mean you got money? hundred bucks is all. Says he'll match it if we run him an errand. Where to? Santa Ana Canyon? He'll tell you. You know, you got morals like a cash register. Can he write his name? Davy Crockett. He's 50 uh, years old. Well, he's a little old for cowboys and Indians, isn't he? That's his name, Davy Crockett. Well, when's the wagon train pull out? Regan, I don't know how I stand for you. Get over there. Get where? Listen, a guy works pretty hard building up a business like I have. Takes a lot out of him. Well, you got plenty on tap. I just want you to understand, that's all. Money doesn't grow on trees. Now, sometimes you gotta play your hunches. Like George Gallup. This time I got a feeling the guy's okay. He writes like a gentleman, Regan. I want you to treat him like one. But where do I find him? He's in a location can give us a lot of business. Where? The city jail. Yeah, that's the lion. Born under the sign of the dollar. Well, it happened on Monday night, and I found the Lincoln Heights jail looking real tired after a rough weekend. They were putting fresh creosote on the walls in front of the drunk tank, and the guy at the desk looked like he'd burst his radiator if anybody phoned for another reservation. It was about 1 a.m., but after a couple of jokes I know about alligators, Sergeant Gonzalez hauled out a drawer with some cards in it. Under C, he found it. Full name, David Crockett. Cell 273, solitary. Gonzalez walked me through a couple of corridors, and then he opened his cell and let me inside. Davy Crockett was there, awake and standing up. He was about four feet high, skinny, with a head like a sunburned turnip. He had blue veins roaming all over his nose and a handlebar mustache to hold him up. He looked at me like I was holding the fifth ace. Howdy, stranger. My name's Regan, International Detective Bureau. How do I know? Start anything and I'll set up a racket. No, I worked for the lion. You called him. Maybe yes, maybe no. You got credentials? Where do you want them? Easy, son. Not talking to an amateur. Flyweight champion, Buenos Aires, 29. Grab yourself a squat, partner. Uh, what are you so nervous about? Nothing. Precautious, that's all. All right, look, let's start at the beginning, shall we? What are you locked up for? Fire plug. Got them in the dangerous places in this bird. What'd you do? Steal it for your dog? No. Parked my landlady's car alongside it while I ran in there. You don't get jugged for traffic tickets. There were two cops. Looked like a posse. I don't like injustice. All right, resisting arrest, is that all? What more do you want? Told you I'm not a man to be trampled with. Taught judo in Tokyo, 34. (laughs) The Japs still lost the war. Sit still, Regan. You're working. On what? Well, it's... Just another errand. It's not much. Well, come on. Let's pick up the temple, will you? My bicycle's double parked. Say, you ever get saddle sores on a bicycle? I did once. Eight-day race. Yeah, yeah, I know. Now, what about this errand? Little package wrapped up in a sweater. In the alley by the ash can. Go on. I calculate I dropped it about three and a half feet to the left of the big ash can. By accident? Man can't fight with his hands full. I'll get down the address for you here. All right. What's in that sweater you didn't want the cops to see? A pole cat. It fits the rest of your story, yeah. Son, there's nothing in the life of Davy Crockett won't stand inspection. 
When you get the package, check it in at the Union Station. And then what? Save me the stub. You get a hundred. Save it for bail. You could do this job yourself. Thought I told you, Sonny. I'd like to be lonesome. So you had him lock you up on purpose? No, I just like it here. You want a reference? Check any of the boys in Gower Gulch. Movie cowboy, huh? Laddie, you're looking at the greatest jockey since Paul Revere. Eddie Sand to Eddie Arcaro. I beat them all. Kentucky Downs, 39. Yeah, sure. Well, a job's a job, Davy, but I got a hot tip where I fit in. Where's that? Trailing the field. Well, I left the little man running his fingers through an old copy of Variety, and I went out into the street. It was about 3 o'clock, and a truck was throwing some water out and giving the gutter a shampoo. I picked up my car and started out to play retriever. That's when I spotted the blonde tailing me. She was using a 37 Packard, and the top was down. I could see her in the mirror. I could tell she had yellow hair like a rag doll. It took a few fast turns to get rid of her, but then I was solo when I pulled to a stop by the alley off Gower. It was in back of some old movie studios. About then, a drunk came pouring down the street, did a loop around a fire plug at the head of the alley, and sat down. He was the talented kind, and I figured he thought I was Arthur Godfrey. Well, I scrambled over some broken beer bottles looking for the sweater. It finally showed, lying beside a pack of newspaper and some dame's torn petticoat. That's when the drunk lost his tilt and began looking at me. I picked up an old shoe, I wrapped it in a newspaper, and I started out of the alley. The drunk went back to his audition, moving toward me. Hiya, friend. Have a drink. That's not my brand. Don't be a mug. A little drink between friends is real nice. Well, we haven't been introduced. My name's Maxwell. What's yours? Slipped my mind. Ah, that's the trouble with the whole world. No fellowship. Except for my girl, Marie. You know Marie? No, I don't. Sort of short and plump with a little sinus trouble. That's too bad. Thought you might have met her. Lots of fellowship in that girl. Every time you look, another fella. All right, move it, buddy. Now, you don't want to get by me, friends. You want to stand right there and have a little drink. You got the subject we're going to talk about? Yeah, sure, sure. What's in the package? Dirty laundry. Ain't that funny, though. I just got me a new Bendix. Why don't you go into business? That's what I'm going to do. You're my first customer. No, I lux my dainties. Yeah, don't go away, friend. I ain't through with my sales talk. Well, hire a skywriter. Hold up, I said. Get your hands off of me. All right, Regan, the round's over. Yeah, what makes you the referee? This does. Friend here wants to play rough, Red. Reconsider, Regan. It'll make you happy. All right, what do you want? The package. You heard what he said, smart guy. Why don't you work for it? Hey, me, Max. <laughs> don't leave, Regan. We're not finished. I got the package, Red. Give him a tip for picking it up. Mm, sure. Oh. Uh. Guess I overpaid him. <laughs> Well, it was easy to see. It was their play. I had about as much chance as a midget in a basketball game. The muscles ambled off with the package that they took from me, and I crawled back for that sweater. It was still there, wrapped around something hard and round. And when I ripped it off, a shine caught my eyes. It was a metal can of movie film, and the word Peru was marked on it. Not much for all the hush-hush, but it must have had a story. Well, I looked up a friend of mine who owned a camera shop, and I made a commotion with a $5 bill. That shook the sand out of him, and he rented me a projector with sound. The lion's house was the next stop. We threw up a sheet on the wall and turned on the film. That completed the night. We had a trip to a good neighbor without a passport. Wonders turned out to be a Joan Fitzpatrick giving with some kind of a travelogue. One of the most colorful in the world. A temple of worship. Home of Peru, 2,000 years old. You get in me perfect up to see a condition. movie? Well, stop screaming, will you? It's free. You know I can't stand movies. I got sore eyes. All right, shut up and listen to this. Peru, the marketplace. A street vendor dressed in gay native costume, selling delicacies to Peruvian children. Beads and jewels of exquisite beauty wrought by the hands of master Peruvian artisans. Horse racing and innovation from the modern world. And native dance. I'm going to bed. You won't sleep. I stole your eye shade. Oh, Regan, I got to get up Every early. I got lots to do. It'll keep. A veritable symphony of motion. And so, it's with heavy heart we say adieu to lovely Peru. Land of the Peruvians. Land of charm and enchantment. And with the setting sun, we take our leave. Well, what'd you get out of it? 
A headache. Yeah, we'll talk about it in the morning. No, I can't wait. Uh, what you doing now? I'm phoning the city jail. Looking for a room? Looking for information. Davey will supply it. You've been drinking. Now listen, big shot. Somebody's after this film for some reason. I'm going to find it. City jail, Sergeant Gonzalez speaking. Danny's Regan. Oh, hi, you, Regan. I'm glad you called. I just got that joke about the alligators. <laughs> yeah, well, do me a favor, will you? Sure, pal, sure. Say, I told it to the lieutenant. He's still laughing. You know, it may earn me a promotion, pal. Let me talk to Davy Crockett. Oh, I can't do that, Regan. Well, you can say I'm his lawyer. Well, it's not that, pal. He's not here anymore. What do you mean? Some guy bailed him out 20 minutes ago. When I was telling the lieutenant the joke, this guy in the briefcase comes in, slaps down the bail. Out walks your friend. Well, he said he liked it there. Yeah, Davey must have changed his mind. Where'd he go? Not very far. Just over to the morgue. Well, the cowboy from Gower Gulch had spun his last yarn. Gonzalez told me that somebody had shot Crockett as soon as he hit the street. Oh, none of this made sense. The phony job, the blonde who tailed me, the fight in the alley, the corny movie. Well, the lion shoved the film in a desk, and I went out the door. I cut across his yard, but I stopped on the opposite sidewalk. My car wasn't alone. It was a 40-foot nash sniffing at its rear fender. Hey, Regan. Well, Maxwell. That's me. You look different. Did you take the cure? Shut up. Somebody wants to see you. If it's Marie, tell her my book's full. Thought you might like a lift. No, I got a friend who runs a streetcar. Now go on, beat it. Regan, don't be that way. Oh, Grim, a pen tell her, Maxwell. Who's this, your father-in-law? You smoke, Regan? No, it might explode. Yeah. Uh, so long. Hold this, Rusty. <laughs> Get in. Oh, Max. Max, I told you before, you're on probation. Oh, that's all right. Don't pick on him, teacher. He didn't hurt me. Get in front, Max. Sure. Where's your other boy, Red? We could play some bridge. I thought he'd do better in the shoe business. The one I gave him didn't fit, huh? I'm a much misunderstood man, Mr. Regan. I'm sure you'll put your best foot forward. I'd love to. My card, Horace Grundy. Mm -hmm. Sometime earlier, a little man called me, Mr. Regan. Uh, Custer or Boone or... Uh... Davy Crockett? Of course. I want you to understand I get many such calls. Party line. It's a private number, but the salesmen bother me anyway. Well, it's tough to be popular. Davy tell you what he was selling? No. Well, he didn't tell me either. Have it your own way. When I told him I'd meet him, he said he'd arranged to get out of jail. He said all he wanted was a job. And he got one. Yes, only there's no future to it. I wouldn't want anything like that happening to you, Mr. Regan. I'll renew my insurance. Oh, no, you'll come with me. It's more friendly. Suppose I don't like to talk. You won't have to, if everything goes all right. Well, it's your taxi. And you're paying the fare. All right, Maxwell. Clover Field. I never knew a guy could say the name of an airport and make it sound like Forest Lawn. Grundy sat in the corner checking the manicure on his fingernails, and Maxwell drove out Olympic. By the time we skidded into Clover, I'd figured absolutely nothing. It was still only 4 a.m., but there was a string of cars parked in the lot. I spotted a 37-packard roadster, but I was too busy getting rushed up onto the field to look for the blonde. Besides, the faster we ran, the more excited Grundy got. And then uh, we rounded the hangar, and the reporters hit us. Say, Louis B's pretty sore, huh? No, no, Louis B and I are friends. Just his plugs are burned. Let us through, boys. Hey, wait a second. This junior who's traveling on the plane, they say he wants a quarter of a million. You going to pay him today? After I see a workout. Come on, Regan, let's go. Yeah, you're a real big man, Grundy. I'm going to be, Regan. El Romano, best rip of any horse in South America. So that's it, huh? Where the ruins come from. Uh, what's that? Peru. Oh, sure. Peruvian National Airways gave Julio a special plane. Everything special. Like in the movies. Well, look, suppose you watch him unload. I'll take a back seat here. Oh, no, no, Regan. This is a big day. I want you to see what... What's the ambulance for? Well, don't look at me. Stick around, Regan. It could be you. It's Julio. Not the guy who owns him? Must be. I, I tried to hold him. They hold on break. Oh, my rib. Take it easy, boy. We got you. What happened? Bounce, bounce. The landing she is rough. That is all. Where is the doctor? You're going to the hospital. Lie down. Oh, I'm broken in six places. Lift up the stretcher. Come on, boys. Hurry it up. Oh, he kick, he kick me. Move fast, boys. Yes, hot. Hey, Mr. Grundy. Mr. Grundy. Mr. Grundy, the horse. 
guy by the plane started to yell just about the time they took Julio toward the rear of the ambulance. Grundy took a dive for the cargo door, and so did everybody else. Then I had to stand there while six feet of big shot cigar turned into a crybaby. Look, Regan. Look at the horse's leg. He's kicked himself. Okay, so he's clumsy. But he might not run again. He was going to be mine, Regan. Well, that's too bad. Call a vet. I have already paid 50,000 retainer on the horse, Regan. I'll send you a lawyer. I got an idea you're connected with this. Oh, dry up, Buster. It's an accident. Yeah? I got an idea there's going to be another accident. Yeah, Grundy. Maybe you're right. Go! <laughs> oh! Hey, stop him! Well, I didn't wait to see if he went down. Maxwell swung, but I took off through the crowd. I figured that Cloverfield wasn't for me, and I wasn't going to stick around for the daisy. And then I spotted a ride, the rear end of Julio's ambulance. I made it just as the buggy started to move. I pulled the door shut and tried not to step on that stretcher inside. I shouldn't even have bothered that. The stretcher was empty. The only patient was me. You are listening to the story of the guy from Gower Gulch. Tonight's adventure with Jeff Regan, investigator. Commissions are still available in the Army Nurse Corps Reserve. Graduate registered nurses between the ages of 21 and 45 may qualify for service with this fine organization. If you are interested in joining the Army Nurse Corps and believe that you qualify for a commission, apply to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. And now back to Jeff Regan, investigator, and the story of the guy from Gower Gulch. Well, things were beginning to move like a hula dancer with a hot foot. Davy Crockett sent me out to pick up a roll of movie film. A Joan Fitzpatrick travelogue on beautiful Peru. There was something in it that was hot, but Crockett got himself plugged before he could say what it was. There were shots of a horse race in Peru. And when a big buster named Grundy turns up buying a nag from a Peruvian breeder, I figured a connection. So did Grundy. When the horse got hurt and Julio did a disappearing act with his money, everybody looked at me. That's when I took the shortest way to Hollywood in an ambulance, got my car, and made it for home. Only parked up the street from my apartment was that same 37-packet roadster I'd been dodging all evening. The blonde wasn't in it. She was sitting in my place looking real hopeful. Good evening. You keep late hours, Mr. Regan. No, it's the kind of friends I've got. Perhaps you ought to change them. I'll stick it out. What do you want? A little chance to talk to you. It'll keep till morning. Oh, but Mr. Regan, I've been waiting so long, you've got to talk to me now. Why? I'm Davy Crockett's wife. You've got something that belongs to me. I don't see any wedding ring. I... I don't wear one. Scare off the other boys? That's not a very nice remark, Mr. Regan. No, but you'll let it go. Only because it's not important. Oh, stop it. You're not Davy's wife. If the little guy had anybody he could trust, he wouldn't have had to call in the lion. All right, Mr. Regan. I lie. Now, let's have it, lady. What are you after? The roll of film. That figures. It's mine. Convince me. Mr. Regan, you're becoming very annoying. Well, why don't you call the police? But I tell you, it is mine. Let's see the pink slip. And so it is with heavy heart we bid adieu That's to... That's enough. Yeah, yeah. I thought I knew that voice. Mm. Davy stole the roll from my library. Now may I have it back? Homicide will turn it over to you when they're ready. I can't wait. Well, what makes it so valuable? I'm not sure. Then how do you know it is? Because I'm not stupid, Mr. Regan. Somebody goes to a lot of trouble to break into my film library... But he only steals one roll of film. Go on. I put the police on Davy, follow them to the jail. So you go after the film. That adds up to pretty important business. Did you push those holes in Davy? Of course not. Now, you're going to get a chance to prove that when homicide starts speaking in your cupboard. About the film, I'll buy it from you. No sale. There's the door, lady. Use it. I threw the light switch and grabbed for the floor. When the noise stopped, I looked up. My landlady was going to be mad. The shots plowed a few holes into her flower pot. The blonde turned a couple of different colors and decided she could find safer company. She left with a fire escape without even goodbye. Well, I headed for the lions. The idea being to make sure that he'd turn that film over to the police and advertise that I didn't have it anymore. That figured to cool me off and I could catch some sleep again. When I got there, the lion looked kind of excited. He was wrapped up in a silk robe with red and gray stripes, and he carried a drink to match. He was holding a piece of that movie film up to the light. Hey, Regan, I've been calling all over for you. Where you been? I've been looking for a bed. I don't pay you to sleep. You're on a job. Now, I've been thinking since you left. 
We're handling this wrong. Yeah, now that's what I figure. Get on the phone. What for? To tell Homicide you got a package for him. You're turning over that film right now. Easy, Regan. You heard me, big shot. I'm tired of playing the fall guy. Now, Regan, you don't know what you're saying. I've been running over the section on that Peruvian horse race. And you know what? You picked the winner. And we're going to collect. Who's making book? The insurance company. Well, come on, clear it up. Look at this clip. Yeah. Well, what do you see? What do you see? Looks like a horse. But look at him. He's way out in front. El Romano. Yeah, maybe. Now, here's the way I add it up. This film tells a story, or everybody wouldn't be grubbing around for it. Well, now, that takes a big brain. So somebody's engineering a phony. Who? That's what you're going to find out. But I'll tell you one thing. That nag's insured by Banner Trust, and they pay off big if we can turn up the swindle. All right. Give me that picture. Where you going? Over to Grundy's to check the horse. Now you're talking, Regan. You dig that out, and we'll be eating squap. Yeah. And if you don't, you'll be collecting your unemployment insurance. Yeah, well, the payoff's about the same. I didn't like it any better than a fan dancer likes a wind tunnel. I'd already seen enough of Grundy and his boys for one night, but when the lion gets an idea, he's like a hangman with a new rope. So I went out to test it. I found Horace Grundy's place. It was a bright new house in the San Fernando Valley. There was some fancy fence in back, and a stable looked like the paint was still wet where it said El Romano. A trailer was parked on the road with a truck from the veterinarians. When Grundy opened the front door, he looked like he'd been sitting a three-day wake, but without any beer. Hello, Regan. Well, what's the verdict? It's bad, Regan. Bad. Tendons torn. Never run. Never. Yeah, you said that. I can't believe it. Uh-huh. I knew somebody else liked the animals. A guy from Gower Gulch. Decided to talk? Maybe. If you keep your hands in the audience. What else did Crockett say? Now you got him on the wheel. All right, you drive. That's better. Do you know the horse is insured? Not by me, it isn't. You don't own it. You just paid a deposit. Sure, 50 G's. You got it back yet? There's plenty of time. Julia was in the hospital. Oh? Well, now, if it wasn't for the accident, you would have coughed up another 200,000. Yes. No. Oh, what difference does it make? The whole deal's a bust now. What if that horse is a phony? Say some more, Regan. I don't know much more. Davy Crockett was a movie fan. You're doing fine. He had pictures? I wouldn't advertise them, but there's a shot of a horse winning a race. Take a look here. Give me that. All right, it's economy size. You're going to ruin your eyesight. I got a magnifying glass for my income tax. Well, let's get a light behind it. Now, let me see. Horse. Right, you get a star. Four white feet. I can do that well myself. Listen, Regan. Horse in the stable's got three. That does it. My boss gets promoted. Come on. Come on outside. I'll show no, you. I'll take your word for it. Let go of me. I got my information. Max. Maxwell, where are you? I told you, don't whistle the bulldogs. You're in it now, Regan. You're on my side. All right, drop your blood pressure. There's a handkerchief on the play. Hey, wait. Wait. Hello. I look for somebody. Good morning. Pan America. See, si, see. Si. I'm Julio. Is Mr. Grundy? No, it's the guy with his mouth open there. How do you do? I'm so glad to meet him. Choke part. it. Okay? You switched horses. Mm, no, no, you'll not understand. El Romano, he kicked me. Wait for the encore. Mr. Grundy, with belief, I'm telling you. Now, look, you better make it fast, Julio. This guy goes Shut off. Shut up, Regan. A man trades a stretcher for a slab. Let him talk. Mm, oh, the hospital. I did not go. Julio is honest. A debt comes first. The interest's going up. When El Romano hurts himself, I know the deal is off. I know I must see the consul, so we cash the check. What? Here we are. 10,000, 20, 30, 40, 50. Your down payment is up. Now we are one big happy United Nations, no? Well, that's what happened. Now there were two guys with their mouths open. By the time we got him closed, the little gent from Peru had waddled off someplace, and Grundy folded his money and started to laugh. He was happy, and at least I had what I came for. Figured I could dump the whole plate of spaghetti on the lion. The lead horse in the travelogue was a different nag from the one in the stable. So I got in my car and headed for home. But I picked up a newspaper on the corner, and then the whole bucket turned upside down again. The green sheet was loaded with publicity shots of El Romano from South America. And he was exactly the same oat burner that came in on the plane, feet and all. No switch there. Well, if there was something phony in this act, it was that winner in that Fitzpatrick film. Well, for a minute I felt like a test pilot in a yo-yo factory, and then the string broke. I took a fast run to the lions and one more look at those movies. I had it. The case was beginning to wind. 
Ten minutes later, I was back on Gower Gulch. Yes? Who is this? Regan. You alone? Don't be insulting. I'll open the door. What's the matter? You're slow. What do you want? Ask me in. No. No, I... Ask me in. Regan, look out! Uh, be careful, Regan. I have a gun. Well, Julio. Uh, yes, Julio. Uh, what are you doing here? Well, I told you. I know. Back at my place, you're aiming at her, not me. She's been to Peru. She has the films. You knew that. You wish like I know it. I go to the movies like everybody else. I keep my eyes on the winner. After Hollywood Park, I should have known better. Yeah, there are lots of races. El Romano was a dud. He came in last. Sixty lengths with Davy Crockett digging in the spurs. You gave the nag a build-up. Phony publicity to the sucker and insurance company. A quarter of a million I was over. Can it. You could have never closed a sale without Grundy watching a workout. That would have been a slow boat to China. You want to be a sailor, too? Oh, stop being tough, will you? You wore yourself out when you kicked up El Romano in that plane. It looked good. Yeah, not to me or Joan. Look out, Regan. You are asking for a daily double. Well, then I'm going to take it across the board. Give me that gun. Leave me alone. Drop it. No, you're breaking my arm. That's the idea. I'll kick you in the stomach. You better go back to his stretcher. Well. Yeah. My, you can be useful. Well, when I'm working. What about after hours? I'm not bad, you know. No, I never noticed. Look again. No, I'm all through with the ponies. You want to bet? Davy Crockett told me to play my hunches. Here I am. Yeah, but you're a loser. What do you mean? You threw those holes into Davy. It was Julio. Oh, you're trying real hard, but he was on the plane. What do I do now? Well, you might bid a fond to do to Gower Gulch. That's not funny, Regan. I know it, but you ran out of film. <laughs> thing blew up like a hoop skirt in a high wind. Julio had a real good thing until he ran into the little man with a good memory and a dame with a fast trigger finger. Her blackmail pitch was already set up, but Davy figured to queer it, so she had to knock him off. Well, the hospital boys came after Julio, and homicide dated Joan, the travel queen. The lion was pretty excited about the way things worked out. He figured that the insurance company would come across with some green stuff for exposing a fraud. They did. That was the color of the season pass they gave him to the Burton Holmes travel lectures. Jack Webb is featured as Jeff Regan with Herb Butterfield as Anthony J. Lyon. It's CBS at the same time next week for more hard-boiled action and mystery with Jeff Regan, Investigator. Written by Larry Roman and Jackson Gillis, produced by Sterling Tracy. Included in tonight's cast were Leo Clary, Clayton Post, Yvonne Patey, Ed Bagley, and Herb Ellis. Twenty-nine thousand nurses are needed to join the new Army Nurse Corps Officers Reserve. For the first time in history, qualified nurses have the opportunity of receiving commissions in the regular Army Reserve. These nurses will remain on inactive status, ready to serve their country in time of emergency. 4,000 of them, if they wish, may choose active duty. All nurses who receive commissions will benefit from the opportunity for specialized training offered to them by the Army. Inactive reserve status will not interfere with the nurse's civilian life, but the educational opportunities offered her by the Army Medical Department will be of a great advantage in her work. Don't wait. If you're a registered graduate nurse between the ages of 21 and 45, drop a card for complete information to the Adjutant General, Washington, D.C. Original music for this program is by Milton Charles, Bob Stevenson speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.